of um, the mystery box. If you guys saw my very first short, these things are short. Um, it's uh, 15 seconds or so. Uh, I got a mystery box. Actually, uh, thanks in in large part to Mike Lorber, who's in the in the live chat right now. He uh, recommended to X Transbots they send me uh, some stuff to review in the future. So thanks a lot, Mike. I appreciate it greatly. Um, but yeah, it ended up being fuzz. Not to anyone's surprise, I expected it to be. But let's get started. The box uh, is pretty traditional. Um, unfortunately, the artwork is not Mike's uh, artwork. He did have some. He is selling some on Facebook so of the original art that he did. So make sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. He has it in some of the others. Um, uh, groups, uh, big ones like Cybertron. In any case, sorry about that. Sorry about the detour. But this is MX. That's part of their um, Master X series, their Masterpiece series. This is number 30. I'm actually surprised. I guess I didn't really think of, that they have released so many um, figures, but it's Securitron Interceptor Fuzz. And this is their first uh, release from their combiner, uh, their Defense or Combiner or Protectabots. And I forget what the combined third-party name is for their defense or but anyway here's some stuff on the side the top they always have these kind of weird quotes <laughs> for their their line uh, they do show off their groove on the bottom which is pretty cool and then we have kind of the g1-esque uh, box design with all their different x transbots figures that we've seen i was trying to see if there's any secret reveals in here but i didn't see any off the top of my head uh and then we obviously have the spec sheet with the red translucent red uh, plastic that you can use to decode this is it bastion yeah i think it did start with a b or something like that mike probably knows all right so out of the box itself we have the, oh where does this gonna go oh yeah here we go so we have him in his plastic tray we have a plastic stack card, which actually comes in a, a, a separate sleeve, which is completely sealed. That's actually kind of nice. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'll take it out of this. And then the instructions. The instructions are super detailed in the sense that they actually show, they're my style. They show uh, transformation both ways, all the way to car and then all the way back into robot. So taking a book out of the um, Pig for Life style of transformation which is great he comes with a few different face sculpts and one blaster inside the clamshell itself he comes in uh, some plastic let me just throw this away and here he is in robot mode so he does come packaged in robot mode all right hey hey guys uh clinical lol gw good to see you guys king rouse Jason, Road Dog, Road Dog. Yeah, a lot of deformers, a lot of regulars here. Uh, let's see. So, let's take a quick 360 of this guy before we get into anything else. Uh, the one thing I will say is you'll see that he's kind of back heavy ish, and it's more that this joint could be tightened. You could have probably tightened this up with something, but um, that is a, a downfall, at least in the copy I have. So this is a version of Streetwise. He's pretty clean overall. He does have a little bit of hollowness here, but nothing too too shabby. Uh, one of the things right away that uh, I noticed, and I think some other reviewers had commented, is the color that they chose is kind of weird. It's it's not. It almost looks like kind of a mix between tan and gray. Um, I, I wouldn't call it cream, but I would have liked if they went with just kind of white, like most police cars are pretty white um they might have i think uh they said they're trying to go for a compromise between um the cartoon colors cartoon accurate colors which are more gray and then the actual car colors which are white which is a a, a bit of a a bit of a weird compromise i think they should have just gone one or the other instead of not satisfying either but in any case, he does have actually a, a good amount of heft to him. He has a lot of die casts. You can see his red shiny plast uh, uh, painted thighs. These are all die casts. The feet here are die casts, or at least this front section. I don't know about this back section. Uh, yeah, it looks like this back section is too. And there's some other die cast pieces um, throughout. So uh, overall looks wise, I don't think he looks too bad. Uh, the face looks kind of old manish, kind of kind of cootish. So here he does have some other. Not cute, um, cupish, kind of old style. He has like a 
more grumpier face. I don't know. I guess this is a little bit more grumpy. This one looks a little bit more youthful. I kind of like this one. And then this one I think might be based on the toy or something like that. I don't remember. But he has a weird split nose here. That, this one's definitely not for me. I kind of like the more youthful one. And then he comes with one blaster here. This says transform and it folds up for storage. We'll take a look at that. Hey Lowell, how would how would you like that if he said that about you? Says the guy who just um so the one that they have on the book is the older face. Let's see what uh what did I want to show with this guy? Here, let me just do some standard comparisons here just for scale sake. Um I didn't really plan this well. I was actually really busy right up until the stream started, which is why I was actually a few seconds late. Uh, but you get an idea for just how big he is. He's as big as a quote-unquote new Voyager, and actually a little bit taller than the Siege Prime. Uh, if I remember later at the end, hey Mike, how's it going? Uh, I'll uh, get out a Carbot or two so we can do some proper Carbot comparisons. But he's about head-to-head -head with those Carbots. All right, uh, really quickly for the accessories, you can take off the helmet, uh, the face sculpt. You basically pull up, there's a little notch here, or, or nub here, but you want to pull up just on the red center section. It's easier said than done, because it always feels like you might be breaking something. Uh, let me get a little spudger here to help it out on the back. Ooh. Oh, gosh, that's in nowhere land. All right, well, <laughs> we'll hopefully be able to get back to that. You just pull off the entire face, like so. And then you can put another one in. It has a little peg hole there. Um, give me a second. This is going to be... Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, this might actually be impossible for me to get at this stage. All right. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna do the rest of this review without that piece because it is stuck between my table and my detolf, which is side by side by side with two other detolfs. So I can't. I literally can't get in there. So I apologize for that. Please don't hate me, Keith, for her losing that and showing this off without his head crest. I'll I'll find it later. So uh, let's get into articulation. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start off right away is the box actually shows his arms rotated like this. And it makes you think that you can make use of this uh, rotation right away. But there's actually a secret to it. So let me start with that first. Let's just open this up a bit. This little section here actually extends backwards. And while it's for transformation, you can actually make use of it for um, useful uh, and meaningful um, articulation. So I actually like that. Uh, but at the beginning, I thought mine was frozen in place. Um, but it's actually you have to extend it backwards slightly. So uh, let's see here. The head, as you saw, was on a hinge that goes up. You can look quite a bit up and rotate around. His neck panel is not really supposed to move all that much, but um, you can move it a bit to get a little bit more up or down. His shoulders are what's kind of weird. Well, we already showed the, showed the joint, the hidden joint, where you can extend it and then rotate up and down. Um, I guess that's not really what it's used for, but I think it's actually very useful. He does have a small butterfly joint, so you can get a very tiny bit amount going forward and then a good amount back before he hits the backpack. Um, the biggest concern I have, aside from transformation on this guy, is this ball joint here. So this ball joint, I mean, <laughs> I joked and I was like, what is this? What is this shoulder joint? A shoulder joint for ants? It's so tiny. It's so concerning. Um, that you could break this very easily. And ball joints in general don't have the best in terms of friction, and they te they seem to um, get loose over time. And the fact that it's so small has me very, very concerned. Um, and even go through just doing basic stuff like this, you can see that there's collision here, which I think is just... it's not. I don't think it's going to hold up over time. I'm just going to be real there. I don't think that's going to work. Uh, he does have a bicep swivel there he has double jointed elbows which are great 
Uh, his forearm is kind of messy here. I think this is kind of the front end of the car. I don't, I don't really mind it too much, but you can. It's, I think it's the, the weirdest thing is that you can see part of the headlights there. His wrist is on a swivel, and then um, it actually has a hinge here, which is interesting, so that you can kind of do a stop in the name of love, or I don't know what other kind of pop songs, 70s, 80s songs that you can do. And then he has another pin, standard one for Masterpiece car bots here. Uh, the one thing while we're here is that mine, at least mine, I don't know, I haven't watched anybody else's reviews. My gun does not tab in well at all. Like, I can try to force it in with that tab, tab and slot mechanism, but it does not hold whatsoever. I've tried both hands. I've tried pressing it in. I've tried going up and down. Nothing works keeping this in. You're just kind of loosely going to hold it and then wrap this around here. And while it does hold okay, um, I don't know why they couldn't, at this stage, do a decent, universally accepted tab and hand slot thing. That that should be Transformers 101. I, I don't understand that. Um, yeah, so... He does actually have a forearm swivel too. Uh, if you unlock this, you can rotate it here. That's for transformation, but it's okay. You can use that. Coming to the midsection, he does have a waist swivel. Um, it might run into the backpack a little bit so you can move it around. And then he also has a oh, close to 90 degree waist or ab crunch waist bend here. Leg wise, you can lift this up. Good friction joints. And it looks like he has um, ratchets here, but he actually doesn't. But it holds quite well. Especially given how pretty heavy the, the bottom is. A lot of this is die cast here. I think like this entire section of the leg is die cast. So very, very hefty for a car bot for sure. Uh, he does have a swivel, which is kind of limited. At least mine feels very limited. Oh, I guess you can. Mine just feels really, really tight. But it looks like you can go 360, especially this one doesn't really want to move uh it feels like i might be stressing or sharing it so be careful with that he does have double jointed knees uh they're both ratcheted the top one's really meant for transformation and it's really tight but you can make use of it you get a little bit more than 90 degrees there oh man that's tight all right, to the feet, we've kind of already talked about. He does have a little bit of a uh, tilt here as well as a tilt at the bottom. So you get a little bit of that. He has a heel spur and a toe on both the same hinges. Um, and again, I wish this joint was a little bit tighter uh, because it does make him... So you can see, like, even a little bit, he, does, he wants to fall back very easily. So... Just be careful with that. Uh, I think that's it for articulation. I think I got the most of it. We talked about the accessory. Um, you know what? I, I got to get that. I got to get that crest. Um, is there anything? Oh, hold on. Give me one second. You, you guys just hang out real quick. I, I do need to do get this or at least try to get this because I feel bad not having it. Okay, uh, that's not that's definitely not happening. So unless I want to take a twenty second pause just to try to rearrange furniture and try to get it, uh, unfortunately we're, we're going to have to keep going this way. Um, I find the waist bends are loose. Uh, this one, I think it is. A l I don't think it's loose. It actually holds decently well. It's definitely not the loosest I've seen, uh, but it's not like um, some of the designs that they had to use faux ratchets or something like that. So. All right. Hey, Con Futner. Who else? Am, am I missing anyone? I probably did miss people. Hey, Luke. All right. So let's actually get into the transformation. So this does have me a bit concerned. Uh, <laughs> the first time I tried to get this transformed into a uh, car mode, it took me forever. And I was like, F this figure. After even just the first time, I... I was like, okay, I think I understand it. It's really this upper body. I'm sure you've probably seen the review from um, Bobby Skullface, and I think also Piog did theirs. Um, I didn't watch either of them because I kind of want to do my own thing and not be biased by that. Um, but 
uh, I think they all probably all have shared that same kind of concern up here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we'll do is we can kind of deal with the hands. The hands are actually kind of easy. They're kind of hooked up here. So you want to kind of lift up in here. This There's kind of a slider here. You want to lift that, pull this down. You want to come to the front end of the car and pull that out. Get this front corner out. And then you want to rotate 180 degrees and tab that in. Oh, sorry. This, this is going to extend out on that double hinge like that. So it goes around the car. This one wants to rotate in. It's kind of good. It's going to sit in like this, basically. All right, we're going to untab this lower hinge and rotate this whole thing 180 degrees. So it's around like this. Coming to the back of the arm, you want to flip this up. You want to flip this down like so, and then close this panel up like that. So this monstrosity is what you're going to want to be dealing with. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Once again, we'll unhook this, bring out the front end of the car, rotate it around 180 degrees, bring out this entire front end on this double hinge, bring it to the front, bring this back and in. I'm going to pull this piece out, rotate at that hinge, and then deal with these pieces on the back. So we're going to flip this up, flip this back, and close it like that. Uh, now let's go to the backpack. We're going to basically unpeg the backpack. So there's a peg here, or tab, that goes into this se section there. You want to push that in and get it flush with the rest. And you kind of want to extend the rest of this. So this was this section was curled down like this. When it was tabbed up, you can see like that. You want to extend that little joint here like so. And for the rest of the backpack, we can deal with that at the very end. All right, while we're here, let's deal with these shoulders. You want to pull these out and just kind of get them out of the way for now. Um, I probably This is probably the section where I'm going to forget exactly how they're positioned. But uh, open these up. Oh, actually, you want to bring them up like this, like that. All right, and then there's a couple of things here that you kind of want to deal with. Uh, this in particular has a little, I guess, like piece of the dashboard that you want to bring out. This is the steering wheel, like so. And they're going to start dealing with the front of the body. Uh, this was actually tabbed in here with two tabs, you can see. Uh, this came out by itself, which is fine. And you want to rotate the center section around so you have a clean front area here. All right, the head, we want to rotate around 180 degrees and then flip up like that. And again, sorry for losing the crest. This section is actually kind of hard. So these two tabs kind of tab in uh, here. And you want to bring this out and then you have an additional section of the hood that's kind of hidden beneath there. Um, this next section, I don't know if I understand it completely. I think I might. But basically, you want to have this faux hood, because this is a faux windshield. This is actually, isn't actually the true windshield for car mode. It's a faux windshield. You kind of want to have this all the way back, like, um, parallel to the, the ground or the desk or whatever you're transforming on. Um, and then you can rotate these down. If you have this angled in any other way, Getting this rotating down is impossible. So you can see how it collides. So you have to have this up as much as possible in the horizontal position. And you want to rotate these around. Like so. All right. Uh, let's see. What else am I missing here? Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Okay, maybe not. Uh, some, something had me very concerned that I'm, I'm missing something. I feel like I made a note to myself to talk about this one section, and I can't remember what it was. Okay, so anyway. Oh, okay, so this is the, the, the thing here. So you can see that there are actually tabs right here on the translucent gray on the middle of the uh, faux windshield. There's tabs on either side. Those need to go into 
these slots on the back side of the side pieces. So when you rotate these around, these will kind of go in like, when you have it positioned correctly, those will slot in to there. Oh man, geez, this keeps falling off because of the crust that I'm, I lost. All right, so we'll just deal with that later. That's my bad. All right, so the head's kind of all tucked away. You can see these sections are coming up there. And now, now we're gonna kind of deal with the arms. So coming out underneath, we need to rotate. Oh, sorry. We need to rotate this entire arm piece 180 degrees. So this piece here. I feel like I did this in the wrong order, but it's okay. Rotate this around, swing this back up. All right, so now we can go ahead and start putting the hood together like so, and start dealing with the arms. So the arms have to be positioned a very specific way. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, let me let me just confirm because this is the key part here that you uh, that you can't mess up. So when they talk about the arms, so here, they have to be positioned this way, so that this L piece, the thinner piece, is sitting kind of um, towards the inside. So it's more like a backward seven in this case, but with a fatter section there. So we need to make sure we do that. It's going to look like this. And we want to tab, collapse this back in again, like so. So it's going to look like this, and you're going to rotate this up. Make sure that this section is still out, because when we rotate this up, this kind of thing becomes uh, a bit hard to manage. So make sure this is out, or otherwise it's not going to go in. And you want to rotate this up and... Come on. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that these are in the correct position. Are these? Oh, sorry. These pieces need to swing down. The one that has the faux dashboard piece and the wheel, they're on a separate hinge. Sorry about that. That's why I was getting blocked. So you want to rotate this all the way in like this and up, and you'll see that there's a tab in here that corresponds with this tab out here. So we're going to go like this, and hopefully be able to squeeze in here like so. Maybe. Oh, see this piece. So th what I was exactly telling you about, this piece flipped up. We need to have that down because that's that fits in with the gap. So like so. And this is going to com come up. And this all tabs in here. So we can tab in this section there. There's a tab in here. This one tends to come out a lot, so we, we don't have to worry about it too, too much at this stage. And this goes in. Am I missing something? I shouldn't be missing anything. This should just tab in. All right, I'm struggling. Uh, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong here. Hmm. All right, well, let's try this, this side then. Same thing here. We're going to rotate this around, making sure that this L piece is rotated like this. I'm going to keep going, keep going. So this piece, this one will actually be positioned like a 7. And collapse that in. So, yeah, so as you can see, you can, as you can tell, it's, it's not particularly a fun transformation. Let's just, let's just be brutally honest here. This part is not fun. There's a tab here with both elbows. They can go in. And this should just go in. 
Something's not right here. Hmm. I'm sure it's user error, but the problem is uh, these instructions are actually not that de they're detailed, but this is so complicated that um, trying to get this working correctly um, is really in really kind of difficult because of the fact that um, there's just so many moving pieces. And I guess one thing I'm noticing is that remember I told you that this has to go into the slot here. It's definitely not in the slot. So that's probably why. So I had to get this double hinge down and correctly positioned. So now you can see these are slotted in. This piece is slotted into that piece. So this should, at least hopefully, I think, resolve the issue I was just having. Okay, yeah. So that was it. This thing keeps flipping up. All right. I wanted to make that a little bit cleaner as far as instructions go, but I explained it. I just didn't follow my own instructions. All right, so there we go. Tab this in. And uh, if you guys think that this is bad as far as live stream transformations, you should have, you should go back and watch my coot revisited transformation. I didn't look at instructions at all in, pre in preparation for that one. And uh, that one did not go well. Way worse than this one. All right, see, and you can see the hands tuck in there. All right, so that, that was a bit of a challenge. But once you have this done, it's really smooth sailing from here, relatively speaking. All right. Coming to the lower legs, we're praying that they're not nearly as bad as the upper body, and they're not. So we're going to open this up. We're going to flip the heel down. You're going to extend this on the double hinge, flip this up, get the side view mirror out, and we're going to swing this in at the same time we swing this out. This will go in underneath, and it doesn't actually sit in like this. It actually flips in on itself, and the hinge that is rotating on sits into the foot itself. So that's actually pretty clever. These are the uh, chairs, which is a cool detail. And then they say to close this up right now. I actually think it's a little bit easier if we keep this open. All right, from here, remember we have this double-jointed knee here. So we're going to bend at the double-jointed knee, but we want to bend as far as we can at that upper joint so this tab is facing backwards. So not completely 90 degrees there. And then we're going to fold in 90 degrees at the second joint. So you're going a whole 180 here, as you would expect. Some A lot of other car bots do that. Oop. These hinges on the back of the forearm need to stay open. This one sunk in all the way over there. I don't know how I'm going to manage to get that one out. There we go. All right. And then there's a couple of tabs here. There's one here that goes into that, that one. This is the one that is the most pervasive, that is easiest to see, easiest to lock in. It helps you get kind of situated. So lock that one in first. And then, oh, sorry, I forgot to flip this down into the center. So... See, that was relatively easy. So going to the other side, the same thing. Close this up, point the toes, flip this little flat piece up. It's a space filler, gap filler. Open the door, get out the window and the side view mirror. Rotate this out while you rotate this in. Flip the foot in and on, in and on itself. Get the car seat positioned and flip this in. Straightening out the legs. Again, the, because the upper knee joint is really tight, I would focus on that one first. That also feels like you're stressing something when you're using it because it's such a tight joint. So just be careful on that one. Remember to get that tab pointed all the way back. And then you're going to close this one up as well. This tab, once again, will play a really key role in help me, helping you get everything aligned. So tab that one in first. Give it a quick squeeze. And you will have a gap back here. Just make sure that you get the hips and legs all straightened out like so. Now we're going to deal with the hood. Oh, that's the one thing I didn't show off before. Uh, and there's a particular reason. So you can actually open this up 
and there's a lights and a button here. Uh, I put in the LR521 batteries in this and it doesn't work. Um, Mike actually told me that because he, I think he watched um, Piog's, Piog's uh, review and he couldn't get it to work either. So I don't know if it's just we all have bad batteries and well, Bobby apparently didn't even try. He didn't have the batteries. Um, but I couldn't get this to work. Uh, I tried for about 10 minutes and did like five different batteries uh, and it didn't work whatsoever. But you're supposed to plug this in. Um, it even tells you LR521, it's in there. And then you're just supposed to press this button. Mine didn't work. And I think, um, I think Piox didn't work either. So uh, I don't know if that's just something that's going wrong there or what, but I don't know what it looks like. So I can't comment on that. Uh, all I can comment is that it most likely is a defect in this because I tried so many different batteries and all the, the both orientations uh, for about 10 minutes and wasn't successful. So uh, another potential QC issue. Uh, this thing is also kind of frustrating. Before you do anything, you need to get these little tabs above the rear of the car. And it's just kind of hard to do because you don't have a lot of room here to position this. There's not a lot of hinge room. So you just kind of have to push down it's easier to get one side clear and then pull the other side through. And you can see these little tiny tabs kind of lock that into place. Now we have the unenviable, uh, unenviable, oops, sorry. I forgot to get this flap out, which is for the rear. I should have done that before. In any case, um, now we have the unenviable position of trying to get these tabs underneath the hood. So you're kind of getting it underneath here which is kind of a weird design. It's easiest to kind of twist the front of the car a bit to get one side in and then twist the other side in. It's a weird thing and obviously you can see, you basically put stress on the front end of the car and, and everything on tabs, but you can do a lot of clean, a lot of this cleanup later. All right, so most of it's kind of cleaned up now. So once you have that tabbed in, Tab in those side tabs here. Now, now once we're at the bottom here, we can kind of clean stuff up. Well, let me clean up the back first, I guess. So this whole section here is a kind of a shell that goes over top of the faux um, rear windshield section. So I'm gonna tab that in. There's two long tabs on either side and then tab this into the back here. Like so. Come on. There we go. Just give it a tight squeeze and push on the back there. And now, now I would go ahead and go start closing the doors while we're doing cleanup. So we're gonna close the doors, which again is, is, is actually a cool functionality. I like how they do that with a lot of their cars, the design, 598 does that. Um, Let's see here, these two things we just have to get in, but again, I think I told you these tabs here are a little bit hard to position, they come out a lot. So I keep them open just so I can have a little point where I can swing this around, move it around a little bit to make sure I get it fit, fitted into the tab correctly, like so. There shouldn't be a gap here. And then this closes up and hooks in here to secure everything in place. Give it a squeeze. And, oops, sorry, and the front end here. <laughs> Jeez. I just undid everything I said I just was fixing. Ah, you get the idea. That's enough. It's a little bit finicky, but you can get it all to, all to work eventually, if you're patient enough. I'm on a live stream, so I'm not that patient right now. But here we go. We have him in alt mode. And the alt mode looks pretty good, to be perfectly frank. I mean... I think it looks, I look, think it looks pretty good aside from, again, the, uh, the color. The color just looks weird to me, and I don't know why this section is all weird now. Come on, man. It shouldn't be this hard. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Good enough. Anyway, so the gun can store it by folding this up and then you can tab it in here. You see there's a little peg here, peg hole and a section there. 
you're supposed to be able to peg that in. It's a little hard to, a little hard to do. There we go, like that. It, it can clean up better than this, I swear. Let's see, another... I, I wish I had Streak here, since he would be a better comparison, given that he's also a police car. But they scale really well. They scale pretty perfectly, I think. They look very good together. As you can see. So no complaints there. Um... These hands are a little bit finicky, but you can kind of, again, because you have that extra hinge, you can get enough space here, and you have plenty of room, so no big deal there. He does have nice rubber tires that spin, so he rolls quite well. And again, it would be really cool. It would be a cool feature if uh, this actually worked on mine. We already showed before that the doors do open, and then that the headlights do pop up a little bit, like so. Sorry, I'm just looking at some comments now. Evil Ash says you can't clean up a pig. Hey, cl technically pigs are pretty pretty clean overall. But yeah, there's not uh, not much else that I have in comparison. This is still sitting around for my prototype live stream. This is a uh, Voodoo Toys prototype. Uh, uh, was it, is this an Ironhide or Ratchet? Anyway, you can see how they scale. I don't know why this side keeps causing me problems. Oh, sounds like something tabbed into place now. It was not a happy sound, but it sounded like it worked. All right, um, one thing we'll talk about, at least in speculation, hey, Clinical, is uh, how the um, combined mode works, and I think it just basically tabs in. There's two big tabs here that serve no other purpose. Um, there's tabs at the bottom here, which again, serve no other purpose. And a little peg hole here, which again, I think is probably for that. Uh, based on the photos, it looks like this comes up and like down or something like that. I don't, I, I saw, I saw in the instructions it did, it looked like uh, the, what's it called? The, oh yeah. So there's a telescoping joint here. So I think it goes something like this in the renders because this was opened up and it probably does something in here to tab in because this, this part was definitely kind of folded out of the way. Something like that probably. There's no other reason to have, have these telescoping things. So something like that. Sorry about that. I was out of frame. It's going to look something like this. It's basically the car pegged in. These tabs here. Um, maybe there's some other way that this might range, but I, I think it's probably something like this. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's go ahead and get back into robot mode, and we'll, well, let me, let me see if I have any questions here. Oh, King Ross is bringing his uh, seven-year-old son to his first con, nice. Uh, um, most of the cons on the East Coast and Canada, um, yeah, I think recent, well, I mean, Transformer cons, but, uh, TFCon usually has one, um, in Chicago every couple of years. That was kind of like the first U.S. TFCon, so that's Midwest, and I thought they were, I mean, some of the other ones, like, has, the Hasbro stuff, or they do some in California, so. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, figure this out. Let's go ahead and get this into uh, robot mode. So first thing we'll do is untab these if they're not already untabbed. I like getting the doors open again because they, again, give you a little bit more. Oh, sorry, I didn't have the car seat correctly positioned. Well, you, you get it. Like so. Uh, what else do I want to do? Is there anything else I want to do down here? No, I think we can go ahead and take the gun out. We're going to pull back on this, pull this up a little bit, and then pull down on this while freeing up this whole front section here. Then we have to release these. It's easier said than done, because again, I always feel like I might, there we go, break something there. So we'll go ahead and flip this up, rotate this around, fold this down, just scooch this underneath, 
and up like so. And again, the backpack is the easiest section. We're just going to keep that off to the side here. With the doors open, we can now start untabbing a lot of stuff. There were tabs here and here. But the main tab we want to get rid of is here, or on release is here. There we go. And we want to straighten out the leg. Flip this up and open. The car seat's going to flip around like so. Get the foot rotated out and around. This section is going to come like this. This is going to fold in. The uh, side view mirror, this is going to fold about 90 degrees. And slot in here. There is also a tab right on the... Oh, this tab broke. Oh, well, this was a tab um, that is supposed to go into this slot here. Um, that's probably not going to work anymore since it's broken. Uh, but it would have held this kind of in place <laughs> if it was if it was there. This goes down. This one closes up. Uh, hopefully the other side isn't broken so you can see the difference between a tab section and an untab section. Again, release up here. Extend this all the way down. Open this up. Get the car seat rotate, rotated. Get the foot down and around while this rotates in. Uh, this tab is still intact, which is good. So I'll show you how this works. So there's a little slot there in the translucent gray. Basically you want to get that tabbed in like so. And that actually holds it in place. All right, the lower body's done. That was the hard part. I mean, the easy part. Now we get to the hard part. So the upper body. Uh, let's untab these sections here. We're going to split the arms. And we're going to rotate this out. Get this down and around. Remember to extend this joint. We're going to need that later. We basically want to rotate it all the way around so this peg-looking piece is there. And then we can tab it back in. Same thing on this side. Get this down, untabbed, rotate this around, I think 180 degrees, like so. And we get the arms into kind of sevens and opposite sevens. All right, untab this section. We want to fold these up and out of the way. We can go ahead and flip this around. I'm going to bring this all down. Uh, and once again, a reminder. Then when you have when you have all this extended, you want to keep the center of the faux hood uh, parallel to the floor or horizontal when you rotate these sections. Oh, let me make sure that I close these out. So we want to rotate the shoulder joints like that. They go 180 so that this flat panel goes onto the outside. This piece has to fold in like that. This can fold in like so, like so. And then, again, come to the top. Make sure that this is horizontal. And then you can rotate these pieces and clear. Just barely clear. All right, with those cleared, you can fold in this top section. And then start rotating these down. And these will tab in. But we'll probably have to mess with those a little bit later. All right, bring this down and around like this. This piece got stuck. There we go. All right. Uh, there's one section here which I'm not really completely sure about how you're supposed to have the steering wheel positioned. Um, if you have it folded like I think it originally was, it doesn't sit flush, but it doesn't really matter. Or you can go ahead and have it kind of sit behind this piece. Uh, it's kind of like this. 
Uh, but then you see a bit of the steering wheel, but it then it does actually collapse in completely. It doesn't really matter because this backpack's going to hide all that anyway, but I just want to give you some options here. Tab in these two tabs into the front. Like so. And then tab in these translucent pieces to the front hood here. Like that. And like that. The head with no face and no crest because of my user error. We'll go back on. And then we can deal with the backpack. So the backpack, you need to push this middle piece that was the tab in. Probably a little bit easier if you have a spudger or some other tool. Pull this out. And remember this hinge here, you want to have it sunken in. You want to have it collapse. I've seen a lot of people um, post pictures with this not collapse and then the backpack sits really high and you can see it like this. That's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be rocked downwards. And then this tab will go into the spine like so. And you can see it's, it's much lower. You should basically only be able to see these two tabs very slightly. Uh, the rest of the backpack doesn't tab in from what I uh, understand. Like this top section will always have a little bit of play. Not a huge deal though. Rotate the forearms 90 degrees. Get this piece in to lock it. We can deal with these panels here. Fold this open. Close this up. Push this down. And then we're de dealing with the hands. Fold the hands down. Bring it around while bringing the front of the car around as well. Rotate this 180 degrees. Fold in that corner section there, and that will slot in. I don't, I don't think there's a tab, yeah. And then this section here has a tab, as well as that kind of little hook that goes around this tab here. Um, I wish this was a little bit more secure. As you can see, it very easily comes out. And then rotate the, the fist as needed. All right, same thing on the other side. Rotate the form 180 degrees, lock in that form, get the fist down and around. This piece will untab, rotate 180 degrees, fold in the corner of the bumper, and that will sit in. This will come in and come down. This panel was supposed to be up. This will flip up open, fold this up, close this down. And uh, one last thing is make sure that this neck panel, you can see there's a little kind of curved uh, cutout that needs to push back a bit to sit around that uh, pinned joint. You might have a couple of tabs that you need to clean up, but basically coming back is way easier, as you can see, as is usually the case getting to robots way easier. Um, ah, see, there we go. So again, Pull this down on the backpack so that barely you, you barely only see those two tabs, and that's it. So that was the long and difficult transformation on live stream of this guy getting to robot uh, to alt mode and back into robot. Um, final thoughts: I, I'm not particularly impressed with this guy. I think he's mediocre. Um, he oh let let me weigh him though because he is hefty. He does have some good good aspects to him. Don't get me wrong. But as you can see, the transformation is really challenging, even to a veteran like myself. So all you noobs will definitely struggle way more than me. Come on. He weighs 7.7 .7 ounces or 7.8 ounces. Uh, in comparison to Streak, who only weighs 4.7. So not double, but um, a good amount heavier than an equivalent size car bot. But the problems I have were obviously some of the tolerance issues, some of the, the that tab that broke here, um, some of the challenges with the instructions. And again, they, they did a valiant job of trying to do this, but some honestly, just some things are not communicated well in uh, two-dimensional uh, images like this, especially the, the arrows and how things are supposed to be done. Um, it's just hard to communicate with two-dimensional arrows. So, 
it is kind of what it is what it is. Um, I think they did a good job trying to show both ways as well, which I think, again, is a good thing. Uh, the other concern I already mentioned were the shoulder joints. I don't know how well they'll hold up. Uh, some of the tolerances are actually too tight, like in these knees. Um, but looks-wise, I think he looks pretty good. I like the youthful face. If I had the crest, I think he'd look pretty good. I'm anticipating what this guy will look like with the rest of the combiners. Um, and at first, I totally forgot that he was part of the combiner set. And I was going to give this away, but I was like, oh, that doesn't really make sense for me to do a giveaway on this. If x Transbots does plan to send me more stuff, it, it makes sense for me to keep it just at, at least until um, the rest of the set is done. Because otherwise, I can't do a fair review, especially when the combiner comes out. So uh, maybe at the very end of this um, series, if they send me the rest, I'll do a giveaway on these. Because I, I highly doubt that I'm going to keep them. Because uh, I'm, I'm a big MMC fan, obviously. I, I do some work for them as well. And I like the all-in-one aspect. So, um, yeah, my final thoughts are, uh, unless you're really sold on this guy for some reason, like the, the robot mode aesthetics or the alt mode, I would say you probably want to give it a hold. Um, not really a pass, maybe. But let's just put this guy on, on pause until we see what other companies come up with right so mastermind creations they're going to start uh, or ocular max they're going to start releasing their figures um i think this year i don't know which one's coming out first but uh, maybe maybe wait to see what other options there are because if this this was the only option i'd say okay sure go ahead and grab it but i think we're going to have a lot of options here and uh the things that um are holding me back from really recommending him are that it are that transformation uh, which you will need to do at least a couple of times if you want to get it into the alt mode once and into the uh, combined mode. And then some of just the tolerances, like the, the weak ankles, as you can see here. The weird kind of grayish tan paint. Um, the non-working <laughs> the non-working lights, at least for me. Uh, the handle that doesn't peg in really well. These tabs on the hands that don't hold in that well. The broken tab here so the list can go on and on um i don't want to sound like a negative nancy or negative nelly but uh, i i i honestly can't really recommend you guys go out and buy this right away i would say just wait on it for a bit see what um other companies offer and then you can make a more informed decision so i missed everyone's comments this whole time so which kind of defeats the purpose of me doing live streams i know that but uh, hopefully those of you who are um, pretty familiar with my live streams know that doing transformation is super hard to uh, actually view the comments as well. Uh, Chogoking actually has uh, a different opinion. He says light gray is still a good choice versus full white. Really? I don't know. I think that's, I think that's hard. Kato's collection... Reviews, if you haven't checked out their channel, let check it out. He says, I think I'm too lazy for that transformation. Uh, I would definitely recommend watching somebody's review first. I, I'm not saying mine is the best because, again, I haven't, I haven't watched any of the other ones. But watch a couple of them and see if they have a better idea of how some things might work. But I think if you get some of the things right, like the, the tab here, that's something that took me a while to figure out, and then get the shoulder orientation correct, um, the rest of it kind of makes sense, right? Um, the clearance issue with the windshield, again, make sure that that's horizontal um, when you wrote, before you rotate the sides and you're, you're good in both directions there. All right. Chogoking says full white can be cheap looking. I don't know, man. Like the, there's the streak, not streak, um, what's it called? Uh, not blue streak, uh, prowl. I think it looks great. Speaking of which, let me go grab him. Uh, go ahead and ask some more questions, and I'll be right back with some comparisons to uh, some other bots, car bots. If it takes a while, it's because my room is a mess. Um, all right, here are a couple of car bots in comparison uh i purposely shuffled around to try to get some white ones just to kind of i think disprove the whole cheap looking um white color that chugoking is uh is trying to sell here like look at these two beautiful white cars 
in compared comparison to this what I would call tan. I'd call it like a beige color. I think these definitely look way better than this. Like this looks like an actual, you know, 1980s car that has aged as opposed to a brand new car off the lot. Mm, I don't even think I would say cream. It's much darker. It has like a lot of brown in it. Cream, I would say like is more off-white. This doesn't look off-white to me. It looks closer to tan or a beigey color to me. Uh, how much of it suffers for the sake of gimmicks? Um, so, a lot of the, a lot of the arm, I think, an upper body does suffer for the sake of um, some design choices here. So, uh, these thinner pieces to try to get everything in, um, I think, kind of suffers. It probably also has to do with the fact that they needed to get some things worked around so that the doors can open, which is a cool gimmick. Don't get me wrong; I like the door opening gimmick. But there's always a, a, a pro and con to all this, right? You have to make some sacrifices somewhere to get a really nice-looking robot, really nice-looking alt mode, and then the transformation. You know, one of those three things has to suffer, right? It's like the triangle. Um, if you guys do project management, you know, you know, schedule, scope, and budget are like the three factors that you can control, right? You can, if you have a bigger budget... And a larger, a larger, um, a, a larger schedule, then you can deal with a big scope. But if you have a big scope and a shorter timeline, then you're gonna have to make some flexibility elsewhere. For transformers, it really is kind of alt mode, good alt mode, good robot mode, and transformation. At least one of those tends to suffer. So, uh, let's see here. <laughs> Mike Rogers says fuzz streaks in your shorts. Mr. Adam Danger says dirty underwear is the Pantone shade of color. <laughs> oh, man. It came pre-sun pre damaged, according to Kato's. Uh, Mike Lorber said he had to compromise on the colors with Keith. So he actually told me that. But uh, I didn't know if I should share that. He, I, I believe Mike was trying to push for... Hey, Cornhouse Corn Mazed. Thanks for uh, commenting a lot of the videos as of late. I've appreciated getting a new viewer who's still going back and watching some of my old reviews and commenting on them. Hey, Tony77. I haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Luke. Yeah, I, Luke says in comment of the... You know, what I was just talking about, the three things you kind of have to balance... Um, he's saying that neither the robot mode or the transformation are up to snuff. You know, the, the robot mode doesn't justify the, uh, difficult transformation. And again, it really is just the upper body. And as I've said, once you do it a couple of times, it does make a lot more sense. Just a lot about an hour for your first transformation, unless you're watching somebody else's video. Back of the lower legs look kind of gappy. A little bit, yeah, for sure. I had to mention that before. You might be able to re resolve some of that by um, maybe positioning the um, car seat a different way. Maybe, maybe I have that wrong. Maybe it's supposed to go this way. That, that could be user error for my part. No, but see, you can't, you can't close up the leg if you rotate it that way. So, yeah, you have, you have to rotate the, the car seat inwards towards the door. Otherwise, it doesn't have enough clearance. So, yeah, um, I, I mean, I think that's really it. I think that's the long and short of it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it's... It's definitely not on the far side of great. I think it's a mediocre figure overall. And... Um, one other thing I guess I will say about this is that we also have to factor in the fact that he's a combiner too. So he doesn't just have two modes. He has three modes. So when we talk about those three things, when you throw in a fourth thing, which is a combined mode, 
that makes everything a little bit harder. So that's why I'm saying I'm trying to hold a little bit of judgment on this because maybe the combined mode is just awesome. Um, I do have a lot of faith in 598 overall, um, but I, again, I don't even have the trailer for their Menasaur, so I can't even um, comment on their ability to do a combiner. I can just go off a of hearsay with a lot of people saying that the combined mode is not great, while some people are saying it is great. So I don't know who to believe. I don't have an opinion, direct opinion, since I don't have the trailer. So, uh, You're welcome, Tony. Happy to do the review. Luke says, you did make the transformation look easier today than what I've seen before. Well, that's great. I keep coming back to the videos of this figure. I really want to like it. I kind of wanted to like it too. And, I, and again, I, I mentioned that this was sent to me. Uh, I always try to be transparent about that. That doesn't impact the way I will give review a figure, whether that's from Mass Mind Creations, Ocular Max, Iron Factory sent me stuff in the past, uh, Toy World has sent me stuff in the past, um, and now X Trans Bots. I don't try to have that color my perspective at all. Um, I try to be as upfront and honest about that as possible. But And I always try to put a disclaimer in there if I remember. So... Uh, Rodox said Menasaur looks great. Corn Maze, Maze is on Chogo King's side. He likes, uh, she likes the uh, off-white. <laughs> Mike Rogers says, I'm here for Pay for Life sparkling person personality. Oh, and the Transformers. All right, so again, my apologies for a couple of things going haywire with uh, the transformation, especially the head crest. I feel bad about that. That just rocketed off into a small gap. Uh, I would try to spend more time getting it, but unless I have little, you know, mini hands like Deadpool Reborn mini hands, uh, I'm never going to be able to get there. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, I'll be back again with some more Transformers. I'll probably be doing trying trying to do some more shorts as well. Uh, 15 seconds is way shorter than I was expecting, and unfortunately, I don't have 10,000 um, subscribers yet, so I can't do the stories. I think stories would be really cool as well, but. If you guys enjoyed the live stream, I appreciate you coming to watch. Please give that like button a, a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you can get informed. Because like today, I usually only give very short heads up notice on when I'm doing live streams. That's it for today, everyone. Hope you guys have a good day.